I can never fail. It's impossible. I cannot be poor. I cannot. I just can't. If you had heard some of these things five years ago, don't worry. You still got time. At least you're hearing it now. You can do something with it now. Hallelujah. You still can. It's not too late. The problem is not the capital. All the capital you need is inside you, brother. You think you need some multinationals to send you money to try to get you up. No, that's not what you need. Everything you need is inside you. I found that out a long time ago. When you take an orange seed and you put it in your hand, you don't have to do anything to that seed for it to have roots, for it to have its stem, for it to have its branches, its leaves, and to produce other fruits with many, many seeds in them. You don't have to do anything but sow that little seed in the right place, in the soil. That's what you, all you have to do. You don't have to add anything to it. Every potential that it requires to produce everything it's got to produce is inside that seed. Everything you need to become the you that God has brought you into this world to be is inside you. Hold yourself responsible. You say, okay, for example now, I was fired at work two years ago. I didn't know I would be fired. I did everything I could do. I did everything that was right in that company. And then they still fired me. How could I be responsible? Yes. You are now responsible for what is happening to you now. The confusion you are in now is now the trouble. It's not the problem. Hear me. It's not what meets you that is the problem. It's what you do with what meets you in the face. Hey, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. In other words, it's not your experience that is the problem. It's what you do with your experience. All right. You've been fired. What do you do? Where do you go from here? Do you look upward or do you look downward? Now you've been fired. Do you think it's all over? Are you going to move better? Are you going to get greater? It's up to you. Where you go from here is what matters. Are you going to go home and have people come to you and, Oh, we're so sorry. We never knew it was going to happen. We feel so terrible about it. We feel so bad. Well, never that. Are they going to be talking to you as they're trying to help you and sympathize with you? Is that what you want? The Bible says, after Lot was separated from Abraham, God spoke to Abraham. And Lot had taken the best part of the field and left the bad one for Abraham. But after he was separated from him, God spoke to him. He said, Abraham, now look to the north and to the south, to the east and the west. As far as your eyes can see, I've given it to you. Are you going to think like Abraham? Are you going to go back and say, where do I start from? I worked for this company 45 years. Where am I going to start from? What is all this? I can't understand it. Such is life. Look at me now. I'm going down. You're seeing yourself going down and down you will go. You say, ah, that guy's boasting. No, no, no. I'm boasting in God's word. I found out God's word works. And I've gotten a hold of it. I found out it works. It works. Glory to God, it works. The Bible says the word of God is living and active. The logos of God, God's revelation from the word. He it says it's living and active. If you put it inside you, it'll make you a master over circumstances of life. You will never live in fear anymore. You will not be in defeat anymore. Problem with men is they don't know how to work the word of God. Put it inside you. There's no telling how far you'd go. All the limitations will be taken off of your life. 
Your potentialities will be let loose on planet Earth. I know who I am. I've found my place. I've found my roots. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Get a hold of God's word. Are you hearing me? You know, when God made you, he had a plan for your life. Get this. He's the potter. You are the clay. How many of you understand that? God's the potter and you are the clay. You think he fashioned you mistakenly? You think God doesn't know you're here? I love it. When you study the Bible and book of Acts and God, you know, Jesus speaking to Ananias and telling him about Saul of Tarsus, he gave him his name and gave him the right address. He said, I want you to go lay your hands on a man named Saul of Tarsus. He's down in a street called Straight. God knows where you live. He knows your name. He's got all the details about you. Jesus said, not a strand of hair from your head falls without your father taking record of it. You don't even have the record, but he does. He knows everything about you. So he had a plan for your life. Some people live to become what God planned for them to be. Some never get there. Getting there is your affair. God has everything ready to get you to be the man that he wants you to be. But there's no guarantee that you will be outside the word of God. Because God has determined what each of us should be. Everything outside his will is a struggle in vain. If only men would know how to look to God and say, what is your dream for my life? And catch that dream and move in direction of that dream and come out tops as far as that dream is concerned because in the world there are no two fingerprints alike no man can ever do it just like you you're unique nobody nobody can fulfill that dream just like you so when you know that dream that god has for you go for it and when you go for it, cut no corners. Get to the limit. Become God's dream. And while you're going, help others get to their dream. God has established you. The Bible says that we died with him when he died. And we were buried with him. When God raised him up, we were raised together with him. And now we are seated together with Christ in the heavenly realms which means we are kings and priests according to the scriptures now right from the day you were born again God began to see you as a king you had the life of a king now to get sick to fail to become poor is to oppose yourself it's not the devil it's you the devil doesn't have any power to overthrow you he can do nothing about what God's already done about your life you are the only one who can get away from your health, your throne of health, your throne of success. God already put you there. You are a wonderful person. That's the way God sees you. You are a success, a prosperous man, a prosperous woman. Peace is in your life. Hallelujah. Do you know the Bible says grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. Which means we can multiply grace and peace in our lives. Grace is the outworking of the inward power, the inward revelation inside us. Something that God has already done inside us. And the outworking of an indwelling presence. In other words, the glory of God that's revealed in our spirits, when it starts working in our bodies, in our homes, in our marriage, 
everything about us. That's grace. That's grace. It's the outward beauty of an inner life. That's grace. And it says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And peace there doesn't mean being quiet. It's more than that. Peter, where he tells us that, alludes to a Hebrew word, shalom. It means a completeness that produces a rest. You see, you can, you can find your completeness in Christ and have that rest. Oh, hallelujah. Have you come to that resting place? Have you found your rest in God? Have you stopped your wandering? Have you stopped your wandering and chasing after success? Have you discovered that you are the packet of success? Have you discovered that you are the glory of God? Have you discovered your place? Have you found out who you really are? Have you discovered that there is health inside you? Do you know there is a cancer destroying power inside your body? Do you realize that? Do you realize that there is a healing power inside you that can produce health in every fiber of your being, every bone of your body, every cell of your blood? Do you realize that? Have you come to know that success is inside you? Have you discovered who you really are? He says, we have not received the spirit of timidity, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. You have a sound mind. You are of super intelligence. That's who you are. You know, people who say, I don't know, I got a problem. What's the problem? Well, I read and I never remember what I read. You are overthrowing yourself. You ought to say what God says. Hey, come on here. When you take a camera and you focus on that lady over there, are you going to see this? No, you see what you set your focus on. Are you hearing me? So when you focus your mind on something, that's what you're going to get in the film in your mind. Focus on God. Set your mind on God. Are you hearing me? Set your mind on success, on prosperity, on abundance. Are you hearing me? See yourself succeeding. See yourself living in health. See yourself coming out victoriously. Don't set your mind on the wrong things. And then learn to cream your dreams. What do I mean by that? You know, sometimes you've seen some people, they have a dream in the night time, or sometimes when they sleep, whether afternoon or morning, and then they, in their sleep, something good happens and then turns to something bad. For example, the guy saw himself driving in a car, and then the thing went into the air, and he became a bicycle. How do you cream your dreams? Take the best part of your dream. I get some dreams once in a while. And then when I get a dream and I don't quite like it, I don't make any big thing out of it. I just say, Father, I reject that stupid thing. Listen, this man, Jesus, came to die for you. You know what that means? I said he came to die. To make you one with God. And when he came, you were not a righteous man. You were a sinner. The Bible says, if when we were dead in sin, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more now being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And the Bible says, he is able to save to the uttermost. Them that come to God by him. The only thing that stops God is your unbelief. Unbelief messes up the power of God. You understand that? The Bible says Jesus couldn't perform a miracle when he went to Nazareth because of their unbelief. He couldn't do any mighty work because of their unbelief. He couldn't. The Bible doesn't say he didn't. It says he couldn't. Jesus said, "Ye have made the word of God of none effect by your traditions. The word is not working in your life because of your traditions. Put your human traditions aside. Put your dream traditions aside. 
my father used to dream my grandfather's dreams always used to come to pass so I have inherited the gift in the New Testament it does not mention the gift of dreaming say yeah, but uh, the old man shall dream dreams <laughs> at 65 Isaac was called a young man so when does old begin at 120 Moses was still a young man so if we go according to the scriptures you're not an old man at a hundred Satan does not know your mind listen I I was set free many years ago when I found that out I didn't know I didn't know I didn't know that the devil didn't know what was in my mind the devil doesn't know I thought he could read my mind and I found out from the scriptures he couldn't dear God I said I always thought the devil knew what was in my mind the next thing that he said to me he said, the devil doesn't know everything I thought he knew everything you know the way we live we act like the devil is everywhere you know we just in our subconscious the way everybody talks about the devil you think the devil is everywhere all right we're here right now and there are people who are going to say, devil leave me devil leave me devil leave me in America there's a devil leave me in Togo devil go this same devil everybody's talking about him he has become so popular don't think the devil has a throne he's a lying throne when he shows you a big throne and says look I got everything he doesn't have them anymore he had them when he faced Jesus and then Jesus went to the cross and when Jesus died for us he took all authority because he went to hell and faced the devil eyeball to eyeball are you hearing me and the Bible says they tried to put him down they tried to get Jesus to bow in hell but they couldn't he threw off principalities and threw off powers the Bible says he made a public spectacle of them in hell when he made a public spectacle of the devil he proved who he was the word who made all things and defeated all things so in the church today when you hear somebody saying well the devil's got power he doesn't have it the apostles saw it they walked with Christ three long years they can tell you they saw it all there's no power in Satan the devil has no power. Hallelujah.